What's up, everybody, and welcome in to the Backliners Podcast. Apologies if I blew your eardrums out there. It looks like I did on OBS. Uh, hey, we're back. We still have this podcast. Um, it's weird. It, it's been a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. I do think, you know, the we <laughs> Barry and I have not talked about this even a little bit, which is the perfect way to enter this. I think that the podcast, you know, in previous years was a lot about current SPL happenings and current mm-hmm. smite game happenings. Um, depression. Why depression? Are we losing? Right. Yeah. All of what those happened types of things. Last week. Yeah, 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 exactly. Just like, <laughs> yeah, that. of course. Um, and you know, obviously with, uh, not with no SPL, um, and our lives both changing. I think it has been difficult for us to keep up with, first of all, our normal schedule, but you know, the, the types of topics that we would have aren't really available. Um, so mm-hmm. I think moving forward with the podcast, we're probably going to want to do more episodes, kind of like what we uh, we got here. I am seeing my left-right balance is off, and I don't know how to fix that. Um, unlucky for those listening. Sorry, don't know how to fix it. You. Won't do anything to try. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh yeah, today's topic. This was brought. This was uh, suggested to us in our uh, community Discord, patreoncom slash backliners if you want to join that. Um, and it was to talk about God kits. Not necessarily, you know, the a kit strength is not the damage numbers that it does, um, mm-hmm. because damage numbers can be changed very easily. More about what god kits do we feel like have the best tools to do their job uh, in the game. We are not going to be going through every single kit uh, across every single role because we want to keep this podcast manageable uh, in length. But just kind of looking at each role and thinking this is what a strong kit needs um, and here are some examples of those things. That's uh, Mm -hmm. So if you have ideas for you know, more broad topics like this that aren't necessarily the, uh, the, you know, day to day, week to week, what's happening in Smite. We are very open to those things. So definitely send them our way. Um, let's start with Assassin's Berry because it starts with A. Uh, and that's the first letter of the alphabet. Before we pick a specific, some specific kits, what do you think, like, what do you think an assassin? And let's go... No, let's actually go by role. That makes more sense. So why would we start with jungle? Let's not start with jungle. Let's start with ADC. Um, oh, good. We'll go left or right. What do you think a good ADC kit has in it? Well, I do feel like I'm a little bit biased. Uh, yes. Due to my hunter style of play. Right. You um, have to be able to like dash out of a knockup. That's something a good hunter kit should have. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you should be able to ult over walls, built-in crit chance, uh, built-in knockup, the best CC in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as you have all four of those things, I think it's really good. Okay. Um, especially like with a passive that can allow you to safely farm over mm-hmm. and over and over again. And you don't really care about your 1v1s because it's like, I'll be back here in like 10 seconds anyways with full HP. Right. Um, so something along those lines, I think... A hunter kit's really neat. Um, but to actually answer, I, I've i always thought safe hunters that have very high DPS um, at kind of all points in the game are very good. Mm-hmm. And I've obviously... I feel like I like both sides of the spectrum. Where it's like, I like aggressive hunters that don't have escapes, but I also really like hunters that can kind of play their own game and then also have lots of like follow-up damage off of CC and a lot of threaten or life threaten potential on their front line. Um, mm-hmm. And I think uh, this feels kind of lame, but I think Heim probably has the best kit. And mm. if I just off of Kit alone, no damage numbers. I feel like it'd probably be Heim. Because he has yeah. pretty good DPS on kind of all points of the game. And then he's probably the safest. He has one of the best ults in the game, in my opinion, for killing or peeling frontline. And then his knockup, in my opinion, is also just 
really good. But I think meta wise, I don't think Heim has been like the strongest in every meta or sometimes even like the safest hunter, depending on what their gods are. Sure. But I think kit wise, I think his kit on paper is in, in extremely good. Yeah, I think that's a really good call. Um, he does basically have all the tools that you mentioned. Um, it's interesting that when you think about the best overall hunter kit, it's one that doesn't have an attack speed stim. Um, mm -hmm. That's interesting to me. Um, yeah, I think just because attack speed has been so prevalent in builds the last few years, I think sure. earlier builds... In earlier seasons, I don't think attack speed was as free as it is now. Yep. Um, obviously, I haven't played much this season, but in past seasons, sure. Um, especially the last like two or three, I feel like probably ever since Cowl was a good item, you've never really struggled with attack speed builds. Yes. And then uh, I think once Heim gets like an item or two going, I think his attack speed problems no longer exist. Yep. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I think I think Heim's kit is really really strong overall. Um, being a backliner that forces a defensive relic uh, onto frontline is r a really potent tool. Um, mm -hmm. And there have been metas where soul laners feel like they need to go beads into Heim, um, or else they just can't play into him. And as soon as you've done that, you've generated a lot of value. Um, mm -hmm. I think Heim is definitely up there. The, the quint, like when I think about the quintessential hunter kit, um, like if I had to pick one God to say, this is what a hunter does, uh, it would be Rom, like just nothing but basic attacks throughout the kit and then a high precision demanding ultimate. But I wouldn't say that he has the best hunter kit. Um, I think just like the most pure i guess uh in terms of like what the role does at a high level um mm -hmm. i have a couple answers as i will for basically all of these i think i should say this as a god designer first um this is not what i think the best design hunters are for the record um i think it's the strongest kits and what those kits do um and i also think there is a lot of value in a lot of the most interesting space in God design is pushing boundaries and not conforming to the norm of what the kit asks for or what the role asks for. So, you know, a God like Martikaras who does not feel, you know, as huntery as Rom, I think is potentially more interesting um, in some facets and has a really good space in the game. So just want to clarify that before I get quoted on Reddit two years from now saying all these things. Um, when I think of what I think a kit that has every tool you could ever need in Hunter, I think of Hachiman. Um, yeah, Hachiman was my first answer, but I felt like it was going to be too biased, so I had to choose something else. No, no, you did a good job. Um, and I wouldn't have called you out on Hachiman because he does do everything, right? Like he, mm -hmm. he has an, a, an ultimate that is both safety and aggressive. His dash can be aggressive. It can be defensive. He's got utility for with his team attack speed. He's got a solid laning phase. He scales well. Um, I, I think Hachiman, you're, you're going to hear a lot of me glazing f uh, Fishman kits. I think Fish is one of our most underappreciated designers ever. Uh, I think the Hachiman kit is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. I think Ishtar is up there for me as a, a great kit that is very strong, um, plays to the role strengths, very well and has a lot of a lot of tools uh i think ishtar is up there um and See, I know we got more than one answer you're just cheating well you know you think i can only pick one <laughs> you think that's possible for me i thought we were picking the best kit in each role uh, i'm just saying a couple and, and this guy's know, over like, here I'm mr I'm just, game designer i can't help it. dude i can talk about each god forever like legitimately i love this stuff um and i gotta give a shout out to my boy on her um, mm -hmm. on her kit as straightforward as humanly possible, just like Rom, just like Hachiman. Well, not Hachiman, I wouldn't say is as straightforward as humanly possible. Um, I, I would for Hachi, honestly. I feel like Hachi, 
I remember years ago, I would call Hachi the, the like, Mario of Hunters. Yeah. He's just kind of like the the all-round, covers all the bases. He has poke, he has safety with his dash, he has aggression with, aggression with his dash, as you said. And then his ult. I've always valued, like, very high team fight ults in Hunters. Yep. And Hachi has one of the best team fight ults. Um, obviously, it's been, like, nerfed two or three times over the years, but I think it's still just a very good kit. Yes. Or a very good ult. Very strong, for sure. Um, all right, let's move on to Guardians. Uh, oh, I th- oh I, go ahead. I had one more. Yeah, uh, hit me. Uh, actually, I have two more, if I don't count Hachi. Uh, Chernabog, obviously. Um, sure. I feel like his kit is just bonkers. Um, if you look at it on paper, he has a stim, he has a root, he has, like, six seconds of immunity, and probably longer, like, nine seconds of immunity, and... Having that long of immunity and a global, he's just, like, better Apollo. And on paper, his kit does do a lot. And then I have one more, which is going to be really funny. Uh, Charybdis. <laughs> Kit-wise, her kit is insane. Um, yep. But sh- her numbers have just always been really bad. And she's never been able to kill anyone. But if you if you look at her her kit... And then crank up the numbers, or even crank up the ult attack speed or the ult movement speed. Um, she has a crazy kit, like an absolute crazy kit. I and... do agree. Uh, I do agree. Her on paper kit is very strong, um, mm-hmm. and I think that she is significantly better than most of the player base would ever assume that she is. Um, and it's because the ultimate doesn't feel great to use. Um, or the three, or the two. I don't have a lot of problems with the two or the three. Um, the that's, ultimate that's... is obviously not the the best feeling thing in the game. Um, and if it were an easy fix, we would do it. Uh, but it's, you know, it is what it is for, for the time being. Not to say we aren't going to ever address it, but it, uh, it I, is I not, it is not a, simply a snap of the fingers, unfortunately. Um, mm-hmm. Because your boy can snap. Like, I could be snapping if it were possible, but it isn't, so. Um, I just feel like she'd be very suffocating if she was good, and she should probably never be good. Sure. That's that's my opinion. I think that is fair. Um, okay, let's move on to supports. Um, when I think of what a support should do, I think they need to help you clear the wave early. Uh, I think they mm-hmm. need, like, the best support kits are going to help you clear the wave early. And then... They are going to be disruptive. Um, and that is really the end of what supports need to be able to do. But that's because disruptive is such a wide umbrella. They can be dive supports who, you know, initiate fights. They can be peel supports who disrupt what a solo laner is trying to do or a jungler um, on their own backline. Uh, and both of those things are two valuable things in a kit. It's just a matter of what your comp needs but all great supports need to be disruptive um, in some way. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick us off here. That's why I think the, the best kit for a Guardian, in my opinion, is Ganesh. Uh, I think he's very disruptive with his ultimate, with his silence, with his knockup. I think... His one is a really good clear tool, especially, here's a hint, if you're laning with Ganesh, don't use your clear until he wins on the wave, because it gives you damage increase, and it actually helps your clear a lot, and I see even pro players would always use their clear, they'd on her impale a second before Ganesh one would hit, and I'd freak out internally. Um, oh, I did that a lot. Yeah, you did. Everyone did. You're all Because the wave, bad the wave was going to die regardless. The wave was going to die regardless. Not, not level one, it wasn't. It was going to die. Not level one, okay, it wasn't. Okay, well, level one, I'm doing it. But Are after you? That, if, Are if you? The wa- <laughs> I, I was. Uh-huh. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. Thank you very much. I was. I'm uh, not sure I believe probably, you. I don't believe me either. Uh, yeah, that's fair. I, I probably did about 50% of the time. Um, yeah. Uh, well... I'm just a Ganesh lover. Um, I think he's really, really good. Some honorable mentions real quick to get out of Barry's way. Uh, Sobek, I think, has a very strong kit. The thing that holds him back from being a top-tier support, in my opinion, is that the three is so much worse than all of his other buttons. 
um, and provides very little. Uh, Ymir is up there. I think Ymir is one of the, the strongest support kits, just in terms of what it does. Um, and this one might be a little bit controversial, but I'm going Bacchus. Um, I think Bacchus's kit is crazy. Like, crazy. It is so strong. Um, I mean, look, again, so many great Guardians. Kepri, Athena, Atlas, um, Sylvanas, Yamoja. Like, obviously, Yamoja's kit in the right hands is the answer. Um, but I'm talking about for the majority of the player base, I guess. In pro hands, Yamoja's the only answer because mm. she does literally everything. Um, but I think the things that Bacchus... Uh, you know, Sobek, Ymir, they do some individually pretty broken things, in my opinion. Yeah, so my my cheap answer would be Yamoja, kind of like Hachi for yep. four. Um, just, ha or Yamoja's kit on paper is absurdly good, and she's been nerfed so many times and was still really good. Yes. Um, and I think just being able to slow stun or completely keep your backline alive with heals and shields or boost your backline out or trap their front line in is just you have so many different ways to play a team fight and so many good ways to play a team fight yep i think yamoja kind of has to be up there yep um i would say i'm just gonna do three uh i don't want to do ganesh because you already said ganesh um sure. i'm gonna go maui and kepri uh just on paper their kits are insane. Kepri has two CCs. He has a prop shred and a prop buff. And Kepri allows for so much damage follow-up. And he also makes the team fight kind of really hard to play for a frontliner if the Kepri's playing well. And obviously, yes. if we're just looking at kits on paper, I assume everyone's going to be playing well. Right. Um, so Kepri's skill, skill ceiling is, in my opinion, insanely high. Um, I do agree that Ymir as well. Uh, Ymir has an insanely good kit, but I think a lot of Ymir's kit revolves around his wall. Um, yep. Which is an insanely good ability. I think his two is kind of lackluster. Agreed. Um, I think his three is really good, and his ult has kind of just gotten better as time's gone on. Yeah. Um, and then Maui, I feel like you can just tell that I value CC. Uh, yeah. Maui, Maui has like three CCs and then a teammate save button. I don't think anyone's really played maui perfectly and i think his skill ceiling is insanely high yes and even the difference in pro players between maui there's a really big difference and oh, i yeah. think he has a very 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 hard kit that relies on your teammates playing well and then you playing well and then also everyone being on the same page mm -hmm. um which is a very hard to ask so i think his floor is kind of low even in pro play but i think potential his potential ceiling is insanely high but i don't think it'll ever be reached which sounds kind of cringe but i think his his ability to play a team fight well is just very high and i think his kit on paper is really good but maybe his numbers kind of hold him back in some situations yeah um, i think he's just too i think i gave him probably one too many tools to the point where he needed to be too hard um because mm -hmm. if the whole kit as is was really easy to execute he'd be yamoja you know um <laughs> we don't want another yamoja no, I mean, that was, we would always joke like, uh-oh, we made Yamoja too. Um, if we thought our character was going to be turbo broken. Um, man, I cannot wait, bro. When Maui comes to Smite 2, whenever that is, he is going to be so much smoother. I can't wait. If I, like, I'm so, I'm, I'm very happy that I got to do Maui for my first god because he's such a cool character and personality and I'm really happy with how he turned out. But I also, like, see all of the noob things that led to how, you know, the, the things I want to change. Um, mm -hmm. Which is, you know, your first time doing anything, that's n normal. Um, but, man, he has the potential to be the most fun character in the entire game, uh, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And 
just some mistakes on my end prevented that from happening. Uh, dude, him, what, Smite 2, new new engine, it's going to be, mwah, it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. Uh, yeah, anyways, I agree. Um, all right, let's do mid laners. Um, this is where it could get a little controversial here, Barry. Uh, here's what I think a mid laner needs to be able to do. First and mm. foremost, their most important aspect they need to be able to shove the wave. That is number one. Because in Smite, the, the game pace is so high, there's so much farm around the map. You need to be able to get to it, and you need to be able to contest it. Um, and wave shove is the most important thing. Like, above basically all else in mid. Uh, I think that you need to be able to clear the wave, and you need to be able to threaten... Um, okay, okay. I should clarify one more time. This is uh, in a standard type of like meta. Obviously, there are going to be picks that are very good that um, do not just you know end up fitting these discussion or like these uh, this framework that I'm putting on them. But this is just, in my opinion, the quintessential mid lane kits should be able to. Shove the wave, threaten you at a distance, have AoE threat. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are the, the three most important things, in my opinion, that a mid laner needs. Uh, they need to, they can be a little bit less in one category, a little bit more in another, but that's, uh, that's my must-haves for mid lane. Um, would you agree with that, Barry, or change anything? Yeah, I would, I would agree. Um... I also think that this is the hardest category by far. Sure. Uh, just simply do off of how much mages vary in their roles and what they do. And yes. so I think from a pro player drilled into my head perspective, I'll be biased on this one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm also only looking at mages for this. Um, I don't want to like... I feel like picking assassins or picking hunters in mid is kind of just different. Sure. Um, it, it's very meta dependent. And I, I feel like putting like Uller or like Ishtar or Pele in there is just kind of disingenuous and just kind of feels stupid. Sure. Um, and, <laughs> I will ask so you I'm, for a separate, we'll, we'll do a separate category for that because I do have yeah. some thoughts on that type of line. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I agree overall. All right, Barry, you can kick us off this time. Who are some of your best, your strongest kits uh, in the mid lane? Um, I kind of feel like Issa needs to be on there. Um, I feel like she's never really been that good lately in mid, um, especially the last few years, so I don't want any recency bias to kind of sway my opinion. Yes. But on paper, uh, her three and two are kind of just, ridiculously good buttons yep um you kind of have a lot of kill on frontline and backline yep and then her ult depending on the numbers can be one of the best abilities in the game um you have objective secure you have a don't fight me here button um you kind of have a panic button but i think lately i think isa's just gonna throw their ults down and die um sure. so i think there is a lot of recency bias that isa's not good uh, but I think in a mid lane meta where she can be good and probably not abused by characters like Thoth or just ranged characters in general or, you know, junglers. Yep. Um, I think on paper, in a perfect world, in a team fight, I think she just goes absolutely crazy. I don't think her farming is that good because um, she has a sand of the wave and she takes poke and everything. But on paper for a team fight, which is kind of how I view characters or how I'm viewing characters right now, I think she's really good. Mm -hmm. um, I. I kind of want to put Raw in there, and I was thinking about this today at work. Uh, I just, there's something about Raw's kit that's just very good to me. Yeah. And whenever he's played really well, um, which he hasn't been played that well over the years, um, I think it's like Pagan and Boosh, kind of just the shining stars of this character over the years. Benny, Benny Q. Um, had a, oh, yeah, Benny Q, had too. stretch where he was owning. Um, I think this character... I don't think his kit is... That's sick because his one, I guess, is just damage, and his two 
I think it's just the way if it's everything... easily confirmable, that's valuable, you know? Yeah, I think it's just the way his kit flows together. Um, I don't think his kit is that strong on paper that I'm really thinking about it, but I think just the way it all works together, I think I like him a lot. And then I think I have four for this one. I want to go Eset, Bra, Mori, and Thoth. Um, mm. Mori, just because you have really quick farming, and you can kind of threaten frontline and backline depending on how the Mori plays the game. And I think the skill cap on Mori is insanely high. Yep. I think she's also a character that kind of depends on the meta and how the meta is working out. Um, but I think if assassins are good or if you have a good front line, um, I think Mori will always be good in mid. And then Thoth is just kind of the, if he gets ahead, he takes the game over. He has good long range, good secure. Um, he's very safe as well. And I think he has a very high skill ceiling, which is kind of what I'm basing a lot of these picks on. Sure. Um, yeah, that's my that's my four. Yeah, I think those are good picks. Um, interestingly, we only shared one though. Uh, I think you convinced me on Eset a little bit, um, though. I think she might just be. I think her her one is just too weak of an ability to mm -hmm. do anything except make her support, um, which I think is her best role. Uh, I also didn't mention that I do value objective secure very highly, but not everyone has historically. Um, but the only one we really shared was Morgan. Um, I I also think the Morgan's kit, when you have access to every kit in the game, it's pretty good. But the fact that her one through three are all really strong buttons in and of themselves and underrated, her auto attack chain is really good for pushing the wave. Um, and, I, mm -hmm. and I think that does matter a lot in a lot of metas. Um, let me start by starting with some gods that people might be surprised to, to not hear on my list. Uh, Merlin and Tiamat, I think, don't push the wave hard enough early for me to think that their kits are, th like, from a, from a, I know I said, like, balance numbers shouldn't really come into this, but uh, they have just never pushed the wave early enough for me to think that they are the strongest thing to be doing in a vacuum, but mm -hmm. in ga if you know the game is going to go 20 plus, Merlin and Tiamat are the best late game characters probably in mid. And that's why they've been meta forever is because they just have so many tools once it comes to the team fighting stage. But what I'm talking about, when I'm thinking about what mages from the beginning of the game and I'm okay getting into the late stages of the game, the first one I was going to say was actually Poseidon. Um, I think this kit is really, really strong. It is disruptive in its CC it, is, it has great objective security, has some of the best wave push. He's got the best rotation speed besides Giannis. Um, I think Poseidon's kit has literally everything that a mage could ever need. Um, I think his kit is super strong. My next one was going to be Raijin. Um, oh. Just having that many buttons that do damage and are easily confirmable makes a world of difference. Um and you can tell because he's been impossible to keep out of the meta when he's any amount of good. Um, so I think Raijin definitely deserves to be up there. And my third one was actually going to be Agni. Um, I was thinking about him. I just think having a ranged stun that's pretty easy to land is a really strong facet of your kit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he also has some clear weaknesses being rooted while you're casting your ult. Uh, your two cast time is long, but his damage output is crazy. I've always said if I'm, you know, trying to win, if I think I'm just outright better than the enemy mid laner, you know, if I'm like on a smurf or something like that, I think Agni's my best possible mid lane pick because this guy will just kill people off cooldown if they're, if you're better than them. Um, so those are my three, uh, that were not the Morgan who made up the fourth, uh, to, to some people's surprise, probably I did not pick Zeus. Um, Zeus is obviously a character I love. I don't think he fits the mid lane identity of what I think the premier mid laner should be doing very well. Um, mm -hmm. I think if Zeus were really strong and you wanted to find a spot for him, the more I've thought about his kit, the more I've thought this this guy should just be played in duo because he wants to 2v2 because of Chain Lightning. He needs help clearing the wave. He always has. Uh, and, he need, and he wants to get to late game with some help. 
and you should just put them in Duo because Duo does all those things for you. Um, I think his 1v1 is kind of weak, though, in Duo. Yes, once supports rotate out, you might get eaten alive. But you also might not. Like, if you get ahead on that character, it is really hard to box him because of his passive. Uh, but maybe not. We'll see. Um, as for non-magical mid laners, I would put... So I've got two characters that I think actually do rank above some of my top mage kits. Uh, and that's Chiron, I think, is an ideal mid lane kit. <laughs> uh, that god is perfect for mid lane. Um, then so happy somewhere. I love that god. I think it's so strong. Um, I think his kit does so much. Uh, I love having him in mid. Um, and I think Pele also fits the mid lane. Um, I think Set fits mid lane better than Jungle. Pele can jungle mm -hmm. as well, if not better than mid. I think Set is strictly a mid laner. Um, and we'll get to this when I, we get to my, the jungle thing, because this might be my most controversial part. But some, yeah, assassin kits that I think work really well in mid. Pele, Tsukiyomi, Set. I think almost all of those gods are just as good, if not better, in mid than they are in jungle. Um, you know, the, the AMCs, like, sure, Uller, like, I don't know. I feel like their kits don't look strictly broken to me um when where like chiron's does look like wow this kit has so many tools um mm -hmm. but those are more just like their numbers have always been high but i guess if i'm holding it against merlin tiamat that their numbers just haven't been high in the early game historically i shouldn't really hold it against uh or i should actually hold it against amc and Uller. i'm going to because, you know, this is our podcast and I can do what we want. Um, yeah, not any any other non-mage mid lane, ki mid lane specific kits that you think fit your ideal mid laner? Um, I don't know. I would actually, I don't think I would put Chiron on there because I feel like if you take away Bluestone, I feel like Chiron mid is just kind of bad. Um, I feel like sure. he kind of relies on Bluestone a lot for kind of everything he does. Yeah. Um, I think in... Strictly on, well, I guess strictly on paper, you still have to see that he's doing damage. Um, I would probably put, honestly, the same ones you did. Um, sure. I think I'd put Set in there for sure. Um, I'm not a hundred percent on Chiron. I think he. I think Ven he is so most. mad at you right now. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I think he's really good, but he, I think he's just dependent on items. Sure. Um, which might be a cop-out answer, um, or a, an answer that doesn't matter, I guess. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I I, think, well, okay, I'll, I'll give it to you. I think Chiron should be on there. Thank you. Um, and I think, if I'm thinking Kid alone, I feel like I should put Yu Wong on there. Sure. Um, I feel like I should take one of my mages off. I, I'll probably just take Raw off and replace him with Yu Wong. Yep. Because I think Yu Wong's kit is really good, but... It's just, it's a bit of, like, player skill and then, like, damage numbers. I think it's always held him back. Because yep. he just doesn't feel threatening to, like, anyone. But yep. I think if his numbers were higher or if it's, like, a perfect world, I think having a root on your backliner um, and then having an ult that just wins you games I think is obviously really good. I think Raw kind of does the same thing yep. with an ult that just wins you games, but... Uh, I think Yuwang having a root just kind of pushes him ahead of Raw. Yeah, no, I uh, I would agree with that. I think Raw is one of the most fun characters in the game, but I think from what a what his kit does perspective, I probably wouldn't put him on the list um, mm -hmm. near the top. Uh, all right, before we move on to Jungle, I want to let you know that this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Uh, they say, what's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? Barry, what's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? Sleep. Yeah. Every day. God, that is a hard sleep. one to pass up. Like, an extra <laughs> hour of sleep sounds really nice. It does. Or really eating. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Eating more, an extra meal, I couldn't be mad oh. at. Um, extra sleep. Could, you know, if there was, like, a dedicated, like, this is your hour to be outside. Like, that would be kind of nice. Oh. Yeah, you know, that'd be so nice. Your outside hour? I think that would be good. Um, I want my outside hour. Uh, a lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? 
man, better help making us think. I think that's the point. Uh, the best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. And this is actually very true. My therapist and I were talking recently about uh, prioritizing free time and all that kind of stuff. And this was more, I was able to do it more when I was working less from the office, but I started just taking like 15 to 20 minutes every day and just going outside into my backyard and like throwing a ball for my dog and maybe like doing some disc golf putting and intentionally not listening to any like audiobook or music, mm -hmm. uh, not doing anything else, just being outside and spending time with my dog uh, and, you know, doing something that I enjoy and it kind of went crazy, to be honest with you. Now that I'm now that I'm working from the office more, I miss it. Um, that like fifteen minute little window. Uh, it kind of went crazy, it, dude. It went crazy. My it, it was really good for my mental. So shout out, uh, shout out to my therapist as per usual. Um, yeah, this like I said, this actually is like very applicable to to some stuff that I've talked about recently. So BetterHelp's kind of on the on the right track here. Um, so if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Backliners today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Backliners. Big shout out, uh to better help of course um all right barry before i go because this might be our most controversial one tell me what your ideal jungler kit looks like like what do they do um i would say it threatens backline or just can threaten anyone at any point in the game um i think junglers that Kind of just passively farm or can't gank lanes or kind of need to wait for that picture perfect team fight opportunity. I think a lot of times fail to succeed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think someone that can just contribute and have a skill floor in a team fight or just like an effectiveness floor, I guess, are just better than other kits. Mm -hmm. um, and then. I, I highly value ganks early game, early and mid game. I think if you're a a character that just farms and the enemy team knows you're just going to farm, I think it's just kind of bad. I think it works in ranked games where you can just kind of farm or like get off the gank section should never happen. Um, but from a pro player or ex-pro player perspective, I feel like someone that... Someone should be on the map early game making pressure. You don't have to be ganking, but... To make the enemy think that you could gank. Yep. Yes. Uh, the number one thing I think your jungler should have is crowd control. Um, mm -hmm. I think it is just critical for them. Uh, I think you need to have clear speed. You need to be able to get your farm in small windows. Um, but I think backliners and smite have almost always been strong enough that if you just get them ahead they will win the game for you um and junglers in smite i think have generally it has generally been thought of as a carry role like it is where one of your best players is playing um you know they're playing gods that alquan you know the like that are gonna chain a bunch of kills in the late game all that kind of stuff I just think, for me personally, that is what I do not value. I don't want my jungler. I don't want my team's win condition. Like, all right, guys, we just got to get our jungler to 35 minutes. Miss me with that. <laughs> the jungler's got to get me to 35 minutes. Like, and it's not I, It's not an ego thing. Um, it's a, th I think that mid lane is better equipped. Like, those types of gods are generally better equipped to winning those 35-minute team fights than jungler should be. Um in a, in a, you know, general vacuum. And for that reason, my number one kit in jungle, this is going to make some people angry, it's Erlong Shen. He's got the best jungle kit. When he had the knockup, I should I should specify, when he had the turtle knockup, he had the best kit that was capable of jungling. 
because he just did everything. He cleared really fast. His setup was incredible. He had good backline threat throughout the game, but he could gank often. He could gank quickly. He could regank. He could set up for his backline, and he could kill people. And he could win 1v1s. I think you have to win 1v1s as well. Uh, he did that well. Um, I think that's why the turtle knockup had to go, because I think that he just had the best kit that you could be jungling with. Um, now that he doesn't, um, I still think he's a top tier kit for the jungle, but I think Sir Ket, her kit is definitely up there for me. Um, I'm going to go with Sir Ket and Thor, I think have the two best. Thor loses a little bit of value because I think his three isn't the greatest button in the world. Um, but CC, 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 like I don't need you to be doing a ton of damage in the jungle. You need to have set up in my opinion for what the best possible junglers can do. Um, and that's why I really value gods like Sir Kent and Thor. That was really funny. What's that? We, the only one that I would change is I wouldn't have Erlong on there because I'm just, I'm strictly looking at like the assassin tab. Sure. Um, I would just add Susano on there. Um, yeah, Susano's good. Just, he has good ganks and then he kind of transitions into a kind of ultimate win character late game. Yep. Um, I think he kind of lost his ultimate win character when he got kind of nerfed damage-wise over the years. But when that character came out and was just 100%ing everyone the entire time. Yep. Um, I think... I can't remember what meta it was. It was like Transcendence, Heartseeker, something else. Yep. I remember being Shablanc and just getting like two shot by a Susano. Like, yep. I died to like his ult and his one. And I was like... That will okay. be happening sometimes. And he just has really good ganks. Um, he has really good chase on kind of any backline that's trying to get away. And I think if you're able to build Magi's on him, you can just play so much more freely. If you're if the damage in your kit and the damage in your um, items makes up for it, he just he just goes on people and just kills them. And then you can have the big game winning team fights where your ult knocks up kind of four or five people, and you just auto win the game off of it and i think anytime your assassin has a button that can kind of just auto win you the game i think it's really good and yep. sir cat sir cat has been like that for a long time as well um she hasn't been good lately but i think when she first came out and it was like i can't kill her she's just 100 percenting me what am i supposed to do um she has two escapes she has a taunt and it, i think her two is an insanely good button and i think her ult it's also insane the good button, obviously. Uh, it just depends on the numbers. And then Thor, I think, is just... Over the years, I think he's kind of always been on and off. Um, yes. But I think kit-wise, it's just depending on his numbers. Can he actually kill backliners? But if we're just strictly looking at the kit, I think his ult is an insanely good button. I think his one is kind of bad, kind of good. Um, I think his three is kind of mid as well. But I think his two and his ult kind of make up for it. Yep. Um, but yeah, we just... It's kind of funny we value the same things. It's just kind of like alt AoE characters or CC characters. Uh, Hunbots and Daji kind of... I think are like fourth and fifth. And then outside of that, I think it's just a big jump off for what I want in the jungle. Yeah, you're missing my next my next two honorable mentions. Um, I think Naja is really high on that list. I think Naja's kit is crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. For what it does. And I think Mercury is crazy. Um, I think Mercury is a lot like Susano in that your early game, you are pretty good at setting up kills for your backline uh, in ganking <laughs> lanes. And then you transition to being the damage dealer late. Um, I think Mercury's kid is crazy. Yeah, I agree. I'm just, I'm just picturing you sitting in mid, and this there's a Merc on your team, and you're not having to worry about the Merkles, and you're just so happy, just walking up to your wave, just happily farming. And you see a Mercury ulting like between your tier one and tier two, and you're like, oh, bro, I can walk up to this Sa wave. Sa Sam I'm for happy. Soccer's <laughs> duo lane Mercury gangs have destroyed your mental. It is crazy. I know. <laughs> he ruined you, man. He did. I that character. <laughs> Like, playing against the Dan's Merc is just PTSD. Like, yep. you can never step up, and then once you stop stepping up, he just goes to other lanes, and then he might, like, 
visit you one or two more times after you think he's gone for like those three or four minutes and then you're just like bro what am i supposed to do like yep there's there's nothing you can do unlucky for you barry unlucky for you um all right last but not least soul laners um barry what do you think what do you view the quintessential soul laner you know role to to be able to do um, I kind of view it similar to jungle. I think if you don't have threat on backline, you're just trolling. And I think if you are a solo laner that just is a damage sponge, I think most of the times you're just going to be useless. Um, I think hit wise, I was struggling with this one a lot. Um, cause like I hate a lot of warrior kits. Um, I think a lot of them are just kind of boring and they just don't too much um sure so i was i was really struggling with this one i st i honestly still don't know i think i would maybe go for like achilles and maybe like kakolin um maybe king arthur as well but they're i feel like this role is just so meta dependent it's so item dependent yes um, more so than most just, roles i'd say yeah, it's really hard to just say this kit is just better than others. I think I just have such a skewed outlook on this role due to SPL. Um, mm -hmm. And I I have like a love-hate relationship with Cthulhu. I think sometimes that guy is insane and then sometimes he just doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. It just depends if like kin size is meta. Um, I think, yeah, I, I don't know about this role. Um Besides yeah. the three that I listed, I would just go Achilles, Kakolin, uh, maybe Nike. I mean, like Horus, if Haddock is on my team. Sure. Um, King Arthur, if Gladshield's an item. I don't know. This is a... Okay, okay I change it. I'm just going to go Tier. I'm just going to go Tier. Tier is my only tier. answer. I'm, I'm just going to go <laughs> okay. Tier. Okay, okay, Tier. He does fit a lot of the, the, the mold that I was about to say, which is... When I think of what a good soul lane kit does... It's annoying. Like, mm -hmm. it, it is generally, you, you have a hard time killing them for one reason or another. They need to be able to waste your time. And if they can kill you, great. But a lot of times that's item dependent. I think just being able to take damage without dying um, and do something to you if, you if you're hitting them. That's really about it. You know, when I'm talking about the lane, like, sustain is obviously a big part of it. Um, I think having, I, I mean, if you can't tell by my best gods in every role, I think the best thing, there. He, the, here are the two best things you can do in Smite. Number one, move fast. Number two, crowd control. Those two <laughs> are far and away. And you know why crowd control is the, the second best thing to do? Because it stops the best thing to do, which is move fast. Like... Mm -hmm. that's the whole reason why I think these kits can be strong. Uh, and so for that reason, I'm going to say Amaterasu, I think is the best warrior kit in terms of what the raw output of the kit does. I think having a damage aura and a movement speed aura is absolutely bonkers. Barry, she gives her whole team 21% movement speed. Mm -hmm. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Um, I think her kit is really strong. I do think Achilles uh, was up there. And then I was going to put Guan Yu. Um, I think Guan is really annoying to kill. He's really mobile. Uh, his team play and what he does, like, you might kill him, but he's going to shred all your prots and make the assassin one-shot you. Or he's going to be able to get a big stun off or just live forever or heal his back line so that they, you, they don't die, like... I think what he does is really strong. Um, I think Hercules' kit is very strong. Um, if his ultimate was better, I think he'd be on the list for me. Um, but his ultimate is literally just damage. It's a lot of damage, but it's not, you know, it's just damage. And I would put Nike on there as well. Um, because having a global team buff is absolutely OP. Always has been, always will be. Um. Yeah, those are some of mine. I think. Yeah, I I'm still struggling with this one. I I think I just hate warrior kits. And I didn't I didn't just... sell you on Ama. 
No, I'm I'm so biased uh, from like a backliner's perspective. Like playing against Ama, I'm so happy. Like really? I yeah, because I just because Ama just doesn't threaten me unless like her items are OP. I Ama just doesn't do anything to me. I can just always out trade an Ama. Um, unless it's like a one v one, then I'm a little sad sometimes. But I I yeah, I think I just view this role as just items and meta dependent i think because at different times i've thought kind of all of these characters are op but just based off of their kits i don't think that they're that strong um really i think guan use kit when i read it on paper i'm like this is broken well i i again i'm i'm very biased because i see guan Yu as just walking up to me and he can't start a team fight at all late game Nope. And so he just dies. <laughs> so, yeah, like, but look at what his kit does. Like, no, I, I, prot steel, I agree. Heal like, cooldown reduction for his whole team. From playing against so many Guan Yu's over the years, I just see them as like walking up to me and dying. Or like, they'll stun and then you beat. <laughs> like, they'll just be horsing you late game and then you just beads and you kill them. Like, yeah. they just don't. He just doesn't threaten you late game. Um, Maybe you could sell me on Herc because his late game and mid game are kind of always good. But Guan, I remember if he just had the double fizz prop build, uh, it was like breastplate, something else. I think it was like a few years ago. He would just rotate at like level 13, 14 and be his unkillable demon machine. Yep. Um, yeah, I I don't know. Maybe this is okay. I think I talked Solos. myself into Guan. I think Guan might have the strongest warrior kit in a vacuum. Yeah, I I don't know. Because he just can't start a team fight late game. I value that so highly in solo. What do you mean? The blink instant cancel horse? That's OP. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely seen that happen. And I was like, that is the goofiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, that is so goofy. Yeah, you blink like 40, 50 units away from your team. You insta stun and then you're like, guys. <laughs> anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Help? Does anyone want to I'm setting up here. Yeah. Yeah, here you go. I... I would always take Horus over Guan. If if I could choose, I would always take Horus. But again, I might be biased just because I played with Haddix for so long. I think you are. Um, but I I just think Horus is just better Guan. He mm. having an on demand CC that you don't have to ult for is just better. And then I think his heal is probably just as good as Guan's. Um, he has Prashred on his stun, and then he has a knock up too, which I think is just better. Sure. Um. But I, there's just warrior, warrior kits just don't fascinate me. They don't draw my attention at all. I really um, like warriors. I really like playing warriors. Um, I, I like playing them, but I feel like they're just so item dependent. They're yeah, just so meta dependent. It's just hard to choose one that's like, holy cow, this kit really shines in this role. Because I think they're all kit wise about average, but mm -hmm. the items and the meta is what makes them really good. Like, when Bluestone was really OP, we saw different people playing in uh, in solo, and then when Death Toll was really OP, or like the most recent, we saw Totem being really OP, so like Bologna and Osiris came back. It's just... And then we have a, a Mana meta. That wasn't fun for anyone. No. Um, you were talking but, about being annoying. Vamana is near the top of the list. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Kit wise, maybe it's Vamana. Just... It's not, bro. It can't be Vamana. Like, he can't. You can't have that too and have the best kit. You can't. I won't listen to any <laughs> argument. But you, you just kill people in your ult. Don't care. Hate the two. I'm, <laughs> I'm such a hater. Um, also, honorable mention. I think so. It Osiris is so hard carried by Judgment Tether, but that ability I think is so broken that. He's on the list, even though the rest of his kit doesn't really inspire me that much in terms of kit strength. I think his passive and his three have like 85% of the kit strength, and that's enough um, mm -hmm. to put him in the category. Uh, I'd put Osiris, actually, probably. I think I'm going to go Guan. <sighs> I think I'm going to go Guan, Ama, Osiris. Achilles just outside the top three. I'm just going to go Herc to your Romana. <laughs> you can tell what types of characters Barry doesn't like playing against. That's for sure. Those are Movement all... Movement speed gods that CC me or kill me. And you didn't put Ama, who has 21% Ama doesn't speed threaten anyone. Team. 
Bro, I she wanna... zooms them to you. What do you mean? She doesn't threaten me. She just dashes on me, and then I just beads and kill her. Oh. All right. Well, easy enough. There you go. That's all you have to do. Um, okay, this was a fun episode. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Um, if you have ideas for things, you know, less uh, current events, more, you know, talking about the game as a whole, kind of like this episode, please feel free to tweet them at me. We will, of course, be paying extra special attention to uh, our community Discord, um, patreon.com slash backliners if you want to get in there suggestions in there will definitely be getting priority because those are you know of course our our homies of the podcast so uh that's what we're gonna do um but yeah until uh, or one more time shout out to better help uh for being this week's sponsor betterhelp.com slash backliners for 10 percent off your first month um big fans of them and yeah we'll uh, we'll be back for the next show to talk about something else in the smite universe isn't that right barry yes sir yes sir all right that's all right until then, thanks everyone for watching, us listening, uh, and tuning in. We'll see you next time. Barry, you know what to do. Bye. Yeah. Yep. It's okay. Couple. Listen, you had a couple weeks of rust. You could barely yeah. tell. I feel like I hit puberty again during that. Congratulations. I'm really happy for you. <laughs> so did you. <laughs>